Hey, hey, welcome back to Being the Church and How to Live on Mission in Isolation. My name is Matt Vogel, and I just want to say thank you for taking the time to learn together during this pandemic. Um, this is week two, so if you've missed week one, go ahead and hit pause and take time to listen to week one and then come back here and check this out as the videos kind of build off of each other. Um, before I dive into things, I just want to remind everyone that as a follower of Jesus Christ, we are called to not only be, but to make disciples. So while we're working our way through this uncharted territory, it's important to not lose sight of the mission that we're on and to look to God uh, and to what he is trying to do during this historic moment. In light of what I wanted to, in light of that, I wanted to launch a, a mini series on being the church and how to live on mission in isolation. So last week we talked about keeping the main thing the main thing, and that we have this incredible opportunity with our structures, our systems, our programs gone to get back to each individual follower of Jesus relying fully on the power of God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit instead of programs, pastors, and structures uh, that are in place to do the work for us. Uh, so last week we talked about the power of God's word. And our week one challenge was to spend time each day in God's word and to simply ask two questions. As we read the Bible, we ask, who is God and who should I tell? So now imagine this. At this point, um, while I'm recording this, we've had roughly 100 views of last week's video. So if you think about that, if 100 people watched that and they took that challenge to heart and they even contacted one person, then last week potentially 100 people got to hear a biblical truth about who God is. How easy is that? Now, imagine this. If each one of us, or 100 people, um, talked to one person per day, then last week, potentially up to 700 people got to hear a biblical truth about who God is. That blows my mind that from a few people watching this video on YouTube and applying a challenge that there could have been hundreds of people who got to hear or experience a glimpse of the good news of Jesus Christ. That's, that's absolutely amazing. So I just want to say thank you for being a part of that. Uh, let's continue to pray together that God uses it all for his work, uh, for his purpose, and all for his glory. Just so cool. So thank you. Uh, so this week we're going to talk about the power of God's Holy Spirit. Now these two things, uh, the power of God's word, the power of the Holy Spirit, they are not completely separate from each other. And actually, it's it's quite the opposite. There's a lot of overlap from the power of the power of God's Word and the power of the Holy Spirit. You really can't separate the two. So again, last week, our challenge was to read His Word, write down who He is, and then ask who God, um, ask God who needs to hear this. This week, we're going to build off of that, and we're going to continue to be intentional about how we can impact those in our circle of influence with gospel truth. So, Let's talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in my own personal reading, I've been reading through the Gospels. I was just going to read through all four of them back to back. Uh, and I had gotten to the point where I was through Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, and I decided to take a break. Instead of going straight into John, I just decided to finish Luke's writing and go right into Acts. And I actually started Acts today. And it's so incredibly fitting. Um, I think God obviously orchestrated that. And so there's two passages, I mean, two examples that I want to look at today, and then I'll make it real practical. So the first thing is Jesus' example. There are so many times uh, in the first few chapters of Luke that it mentions Jesus going into an isolated place or going alone to pray, as well as Jesus being filled with the Spirit and then going out into ministry. So there's a lot of things, a lot of verses we could look at today. I want to read Luke chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. It says this, it says, One day, soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be his apostles. Now, there's so much that we could go into here, but there's a pattern in Jesus' own life of going into an isolated place, praying, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and then doing ministry. That's a very obvious pattern. And this, I love this, because the night before he selects the 12, he's up all 
night praying. Again, so much more we could dive into, but let's make note of that and let's move on here. So uh, another example I want to look at is the disciples example from the book of Acts. So this is Acts chapter 4 and it's verse 31 and it says this, After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. So here's an application with those two things in mind. There's really, there's no shortcut to get results. In a culture where we want and can usually get instant results, we have to discipline ourselves to understand that there are no shortcuts spiritually. If you want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through you, you have to take time to let the Holy Spirit fill you. I'm going to say that again. Just think about that. If you want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through you, you have to take time to let the Holy Spirit fill you. Now, when we're talking about being the church and how to live on mission in isolation, we have to take the time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's no shortcuts. And yes, as followers of Jesus Christ, we all have the Holy Spirit. But few of us live a life that fully depends on the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we need to take time to be filled. Through time, you're going to know his word. Through time, you're going to learn his voice. And then when we are living out our lives and making split decisions amongst the lost, we can know for certain what God is asking us to do because we've learned what his voice sounds like. And then we can choose to do it and live it out. Now, most of us don't actually live there, at least not consistently. There are very few who can hear God's leading this way and respond to it consistently daily, multiple times. But, but it's available to all, and it's a part of every follower's calling. And I want so badly to grow in this every day of my life, and I want that for you too. So the question for us is how? How do we make that happen? I mentioned in week one, one of my goals was for everyone to be able to listen to each week's video and say, you know, I can do that. And hopefully you've experienced that already as you've taken me up on week one's challenge. And if not, that's okay. Just try it again. Um, but with those things in mind, here's, here's a simple way to apply what we are talking about today. In your time with God, in your daily time with God, both those intentional moments where you are isolated and are one-on-one -on -one with God, as well as during the chaos of our lives and, and us trying to abide in Christ, let's practice these three things together. Ask, listen, and obey. During your isolated times with Jesus, read his word, pray through it, align your will to God, and then ask him questions like, what's your will for me today? Who do you want me to radically love today? What's one practical way I can show them your love? God, who do you want me to speak the truth in love to today? And what's the truth that they need to hear in this moment of their lives? These are mission-minded questions. Realizing that, uh, that what God does in you he will do through you. And what I mean by that is that the truths that you are learning as you read in those isolated moments with Jesus, those will be the truths that someone in your path needs to hear. So what God does in you, he's going to do through you. So we need to ask God. We need to listen to God and then obey him. I'll give you an example. Uh, some of my own wrestlings and challenges with last week trying to put uh, week one's challenge into practice. I said I was going to be with you, I was going to be praying for you, I was going to be doing the challenge alongside of you. Um, and really, our week one challenge was all about asking, listening, and obeying. We just didn't label it that way. So last week, I made a list of who God is through my reading. Uh, I prayed through that list, and I was ready to share. And one day, one way I was looking to do that um, was, was out on a walk. I've been trying to walk with my kids, you know, take them out one-on-one -on -one, uh, and just spend some intentional time with my kids. And that in and of itself is great opportunities to share gospel truth. Um, but while I was out walking with one of my kids, I was 
going, okay, God, I want to I look for an intentional conversation here. So uh, I was looking for neighbors, looking for anybody out that I could wave to and just start a conversation with. And there was absolutely no one. Uh, so I quickly forgot about it and I moved on with my day. Um, later that day, I had something that I needed to return to the church and a couple other errands to run. So as most of us do, I just kind of made my list to do for the day and started uh, checking off my tasks, right? So I got to the church and I was rushing around, um, got some things done, went out to the dumpster to throw some things away. And while I was out there, there's a couple guys working in the garden ministry. Um, and so I just waved at one of them real quick and got back to go in my car and I go, hang on a second. Maybe this is the conversation you want me to have, God. So I eliminated my hurry. I took time and I looked and I listened and uh, I engaged with two guys in a conversation. And I just took the time to, to ask them questions, ask them what was going on. They, they toured the garden. They showed me the garden. They gave me a quick tour of it and talked to them for probably about 30 minutes. Um, and it was in the middle of that 30 minute conversation that I sh simply shared this truth. I said, you know, no matter how many broken relationships we have in this world and in our life, Jesus will never leave us. And then I offered to pray for these two, and that was it. And when there was no big glorious conversion, there's no revival, it was simply obedience. And that's a huge thing, that we do what God asks, and then we leave the results up to Him. I'm going to talk about that more in another video, but for now, here's our challenge for week two. As you spend time with God this week, ask, listen, obey. For you, you may want to keep doing what we started last week and just kind of get used to that rhythm. Make that a habit. Make that a part of your life where you're reading through the Bible and making a list. Who is God? And then during your prayer after that, ask him, God, who needs to hear this truth? Contact that person, text them, give them a phone call, whatever, and tell them the truth. Tell them you're praying for them. Maybe you just want to keep doing that. Uh, over my last week, there were four people that I was able to do that with. And if I wasn't intentional about this challenge, I never would have shared uh, those truths with these four men last week. So if that's what you want to do and you feel led to do it, enjoy it. Continue it. Uh, God will do a lot through it, especially if this becomes a habit of yours. Um, so maybe as another way, as you ask, listen, and obey, God will give you something a little different to do. Maybe through listening to God, he's going to put a neighbor on your mind. Or maybe he's going to put an amount of money on your mind and your heart that, that he wants you to be ready to give away to a need that's going to come up. Maybe um, maybe it's he's just going to ask you to take some extra time to minister to your family during COVID-19, if that applies to you. Uh, he, he may ask you to do any number of things, but the key... I really want to focus on this week is that there are no shortcuts. If you want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through you, you have to take time to let the Holy Spirit fill you. John Piper puts it this way. He says that the aroma of God will not linger on a person who does not linger in the presence of God. The aroma of God will not linger on a person who does not linger in the presence of God. So spend time with God. Ask for the filling of his Holy Spirit. Ask him how he wants you to live on mission for him today. And then obey. If you want results, if you want to live a life that is led by the power of the Holy Spirit, make time with him daily. Listening intently to him and make that a habit of your life. You'll learn his word. You'll learn his voice. And you'll enjoy learning what it means to live a life fully led by the power of the Holy Spirit. With that, I just want to say thank you so much for coming back here this week. I'm going to continue to be praying for you through this week. Uh, I ask that you would pray for me as well as I'm trying to implement these challenges and really be alongside of you in that. And as we do that, let's enjoy the power of the Holy Spirit being our guide and being the church and how to live on mission in isolation. Thanks again for your time. We'll see you next week.